page rank is a measure of the importance of a web page, but let me immediately correct my own confusion that I suffered from for some time until very recently, which is that even though page rank is used for ranking pages, it's called page rank after its after its discoverer and developer, Larry Page, who is one of the co-founders, along with Serge Brin, of Google. So the motivation is that um, when you, at least before Google, when you did a standard retrieval on a web page using keyword search and similar kinds of criteria, you'd get back millions of hits, um, most of which were really of uh, low quality and you weren't interested in, and with a few useful pages buried in the millions. And the question was, uh, all of these documents are indistinguishable in terms of keyword search and, and textual patterns. How do you figure out which are the important ones? And the idea that uh, that Page came up with was to use the web structure itself, the structure of the World Wide Web, to identify the important documents. So we can think of the, uh, the whole internet as a graph where a user is on a page and we think of a URL as a link to another page, as a directed edge, and users are kind of randomly traveling around in the World Wide Web. They're at a page, they randomly click a link to get to another page, and they keep doing doing a walk on the web graph. And every once in a while they're going to find that the thread that they're on is kind of losing steam or they find themselves in some kind of a cycle and they will randomly start over again uh, at some other page. And we want to argue or, uh, or hypothesize that a page is more important when it's viewed a large fraction of the time by these random browsers and random users. So to be formal, we're going to take the entire World Wide Web, trillions of vertices, as a digraph. Uh, and there's going to be an edge from one URL to another, from V to W, if there's a link from uh, the page V to uh, the page W or the URL W. W might not even be a page, it might be a document, which means it doesn't have any links on it. But for the, the, the real vertices are the web pages that have links on them. Okay, that's the model. Uh, and we're going to make it into a random walk graph by saying that if you look at a URL V, at a vertex V, all of the edges out of it are equally likely. It's a simple model and it might or might not work, but in fact it did work pretty well. That is the uh, model of the World Wide Web uh, as a random walk graph. So to be more precise, the probability of the edge that goes from V to W is 1 over the out degree of V. That is, all of the out degree of V edges leaving vertex V get equal weight. Now to model this aspect that the users start over again if they get bored or they get stuck, um, we can formally add to the digraph a hypothetical supernode um, which the, and with the property that there's an edge from the supernode to every other node with equally likelihood. So once you're at the supermode, then following an edge is tantamount to saying, pick a random page and start over again. Um, to get to the supernode, we, uh, no, we have edges back from other nodes in the graph back to the supernode. Now in the reading, we said that uh, we were going to have nodes back from, uh, from no terminal nodes that had no edges out, for example, a document or something like that. That's actually not sufficient because uh, for, the, uh, for the page rank to work in the theoretical way that we want it to, uh, because even if there is um, no dead nodes, you might be in a clump of nodes which you can't get out of and you'd want to be able to, and even though none of them was a dead end because they all had arrows going out to each other. And so you'd really want a node from a, uh, an edge from a clump like that back to the super node to model starting over there. Uh, the simplest way to do it really is to simply say that there's an edge to the super node from every vertex. So wherever, wherever you are, you can randomly decide to start over, but, uh, and uh, Page uh, and Brin and their co-authors in the original paper on page rank uh, suggested that the edge back from a vertex to the super vertex might get a special probability. It might be customized as opposed to being uh, equally likely with all of the other uh, edges leading a vertex. In fact, I think they decided that it, there should be a 0.15 probability from each vertex of uh, jumping at random to the super node. 
Okay, um, let's just illustrate this with an example. This is a random walk graph that we've seen before modeling coin flipping. And when I add the super node, there's this one new uh, vertex super, and there's an edge from the super vertex to every other one of the vertices in the graph. And from each vertex in the graph, there is an edge going back. I've illustrated that with two-way arrows. Uh, uh, so this is really uh, an arrow with two arrow heads. It represents an arrow in each direction. Now, in the original paper, actually, uh, Page didn't talk about a super vertex. Instead, he talked about uh, each vertex randomly jumping to another vertex, but that would just get the whole state diagram completely clogged up with edges. So it's more economical to have everybody jump to the super vertex uh, and the super vertex jump back to everybody. Uh, and that uh, saves a significant number of edges. So page rank then is obtained by computing a stationary distribution for the World Wide Web. Um, so s bar is a vector of length trillions. The, co co uh, the coordinates are indexed by the web pages. Um, and we want to calculate the stable distribution. And then we'll simply define the page rank of a page is its, uh, its probability of being there in the stationary distribution, the v component of the, stable dist of the stationary distribution s. And of course, we'll rank v above s when the probability of being in v is higher than the probability of being in W. By the way, um, uh, I don't have the latest figures, but uh, there were, uh, I guess I've heard people who've worked for Google say, and in some of the Wikipedia articles, that it takes a few weeks for the crawlers to uh, create a new map of the web, uh, to create the new graph, and then it takes um, some number of hours, I think under days, to calculate the stationary distribution on the graph, doing a lot of parallel computation. So a useful feature about the uh, using the, uh, the stationary distribution is that um, ways to hack uh, the links in the World Wide Web to make a page look important are, uh, uh, will not work very well against page rank. So for example, one way to look more important is to create a lot of nodes pointing to yourself, fake nodes. But that's not going to matter because the fake nodes are not going to have much weight since they're fake and nobody's pointing to them. So even though a large number of fake nodes uh, point to you, their cumulative weight is low and they're not adding a lot to your own probability. Likewise, you could try taking links to important pages um, and try to make yourself look important that way, but page rank won't make you look important at all if none of those important nodes are pointing back. So both of these simple-minded ways to try to look important by manipulating links won't improve your page rank. The super node is playing a technical role um, uh, in making sure that the stationary uh, distribution exists. So um, uh, it guarantees that there's a unique stationary distribution s bar. By the way, I'm, I sometimes use the word stable and sometimes stationary. They're kind of synonyms, um, although I think officially we should stick to the word stationary distribution. Um, when, uh, as I've mentioned before, when a, a, a digraph is strongly connected, that is a sufficient condition for there to be a unique stable distribution. That's actually proved in one of the exercises in the text at the end of the chapter. Um, the super node mechanism also uh, ensures something even stronger, that every initial distribution p converges to the uh, stationary distribution, to that unique stationary distribution. Stated precisely mathematically, um, if you start off at an arbitrary distribution of uh, probabilities of being in different states, p, and you look at what happens to uh, p after t steps, remember that you get by uh, multiplying the vector p by the matrix uh, m raised to the power t, and you take the limit as t approaches infinity. That is to say, uh, what distribution do you approach as you 
do more and more updates. Uh, and it turns out that that limit exists and it is that stationary distribution. So it doesn't matter where you start, you're going to wind up stable. And as a matter of fact, the convergence is rapid. What that means is that you can actually uh, calculate the stable distribution reasonably quickly because you don't need a very large t in order to arrive at a very good approximation to the stable distribution. Now, the actual Google rank uh, and ranking is more complicated than just page rank. Page rank was the original idea that got a lot of attention. And in fact, the latest information from Google is that they think it gets over attention in the, uh, today in the modern world by too many commentators and, and people trying to uh, simulate ranking. So the actual rank rules are a closely held trade secret for Google, uh, by Google, they use text, they use location, they use payments because advertisers can pay to have their search results listed more prominently. Uh, and lots of other criteria that have evolved over 15 years and they continue to evolve as people find ways to manipulate the ranking. Google revises its ranking criteria and algorithms. But nevertheless, page rank continues to play a significant role in the whole story.